Yeah, I threw that together last second because I was like, oh shit. Yeah, it's um, it's a reflavored uh, killer whale. So it, they, there's no narwhal in the <laughs> game. But a killer whale is a CR3, which is actually kind of perfect because that's the, the CR monster you can morph into. Perfect. <clears throat> Right. That's awesome. Did we, uh, did anybody decide what they think's coming out of the water? Any bets? Is it a narwhal? A friend. Is yep. it Jormungandr, Ender of Worlds? <laughs> it's it's a Rathator. Ooh. 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 It's a sea rock. We're all swimming to fire sheer. I think it's a slightly bigger kraken. That's what I was thinking. Fair enough. They're cracking with more arms. Or it could be a whole school of little krakens. It's like a oh. sailor monster. Yeah, it's like a, a hive mind kraken. Yeah, it's like, like the rat king from Hilda. Cold. Yes. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, speaking of, uh, if you guys haven't read Laurel's uh, summary of last session, I think it's probably the best one yet. It's like super concise, but it covers a shit ton of ground. And it's like, there's a lot, not a lot of shit that went down last session philosophically and uh, just RP wise with the group. So, um, yeah, pretty exciting. And, uh, anyways, to recap the recap, you guys are on a boat. You're going to Fireshear on your way heading Don't north. Understand. And uh, you happen to be having a nice chat with uh, your boy Zalaron, and uh, all of a sudden, two large ice krakens came out of the water and started attacking the ship. And uh, a fight has ensued. And you guys have been doing pretty well for yourself. Um. And Missile, having shot himself up into the sky to avoid uh, dying, is uh, now able to spot in the water an even darker figure ominously moving towards the ship. And that is where we left off, I think at the end of Missile's turn, correct? Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, um, what direction is it coming from? Oh, um, I guess the question would be, did Missile say something? Oh, um, yeah. oh. I think we ended. We were just kind of like made aware of the fact that I saw something, and then that was that. So I haven't said anything yet. Okay. So um, in that case, only Missile knows. Could hey. I get a private message of the direction? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not your turn. You can't do anything anyway. All right, fair enough. I'll tell you when it gets to your turn. All right. <laughs> um, anywho, so it is this sailor's turn. You guys have all been waiting all week for this sailor to go, and he does. He's going to save us. Yeah, he's the one. He's going to attack Bosner. He's turning on you. He sees the writing on the walls. And he's going to swing and miss, and that is his turn. Zalaron is going to um, run at this Kraken and uh, give him the old heave ho. And uh, Zalaron swings twice with his long sword and once with his short sword carving into the tentacles of the ice kraken and uh, screaming uh, get off my boat there and it is this sailor's turn who is going to try to swim away from the kraken but parallel to the boat and uh, he takes a point of exhaustion it is the ice kraken's turn Man, okay. So, he is going to attack this guy, who he crits, and he is going to use, he's going to grapple him and then use bite 
to uh, just straight up ingest this guy. Oh no, it doesn't work. Well, dang it. Oh man. Well, that's fine. So what happens is he swallows the uh, guy and um, well we're just gonna say he's not coming back and um, Isolde it's your turn alrighty um, Isolde runs oh it's paused I unpaused it oh, do I have to refresh then because it's still paused for me how about now? Oh, now it's rolling all the dice that you've used since then. Okay. <laughs> so I run <laughs> I run up to uh, Johoff and take my little uh, red leather cord and put it around his arm, and it feels like nothing's there. Um, and I cast Freedom of Movement on him and say, It can't grab you now, you can get close. And uh, that's my turn. Oh, all right. Cast it into the chat. Will do. Okay. <laughs> this sailor is going to um, shoot at this ice kraken. Miss. This sailor also. And hit. This sailor is going to... Shoot with his heavy crossbow. This guy. And at the end of his turn, um, Zalaron is going to get smacked. Uh, and dodge it. And this guy is going to also get smacked and dodge it as well. All right, Taryn, you're up. All right, um, Taryn's just going to cast Blight, um, but he's going to empower it so the Kraken has disadvantage. Sweet. On it. Saving throw. So he failed anyways, so it's perfect. Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to back away a little bit. Very cool. All right. At the top of the initiative. Ooh, I uh, just, did I just make him unconscious? What the fuck did I just do? His exhaustion for. do that uh, I don't know what's happening all right all right I think I got oh, no. <laughs> pay no attention to the uh, complete catastrophe here oh god I undid that ice crackens turn order all right he's back in the initiative but now he's at three who knows anyways um Whoops. So, as you uh, shoot this blight into the ice kraken, it uh, lets out a kind of strange, otherworldly scream. And now the dark shadow that Missile has seen all along, uh, or has seen for <laughs> six seconds, uh, are in that water. The water starts to like bubble. And uh, as something rises to the surface and an insane amount of tentacles burst through and shoot like sea spray everywhere as a massive kraken appears alongside the ship. Now Cthulhu's even bigger. And that is... 
do add to the initiative. And it is the turn of this massive creature who is going to use a feature. The sky above you as this creature emerges was a gray, sort of hazy, blizzardy weather, but it starts to get even darker and sort of churn, and out of the sky, hail begins to just pour down on the ship slamming into the deck and making ice just kind of wreck the top level of the boards um, sending sailors flying as they like try to duck for cover uh, cutting them apart now I want to check the saves Joha failed looks like everybody failed okay but I should still just take half damage. Is that right? Is that right? Okay. Yeah. What kind of damage was it? It was... It should track with your... Uh, it okay. was partially bludgeoning and partially cold. Okay. So, um, Johoff should take... Uh, I'm currently resistant on cold damage, John. I'm not sure what you want to do with that. For, for how? Oh, because you drank a potion? Uh, the potion of cold. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me check the damage here. So it's it gave half damage to Johoff for the cold. Did, was your tattoo activated? Uh, no, the, not like the second level of it. Okay, so I need to give you back ten health. Yeah, and um... the Marcus should get six back, I think. Okay. And I, I guess it, it, it um, tracked for my uh, bludgeoning immunity as well. Or not immunity, um, resistance? Yeah, but it's magic, so I don't think it counts. Okay. So it says, yeah, from non-magical attacks. Okay. Okay, I think that's all sorted out. If cool. something seems wrong for anybody, let me know. So, yeah, this huge, uh, like, just opening of hail just comes pouring through this ominous cloud in the sky and uh, starts wreaking havoc on the deck of the ship and now it is coated with a slick ice on top of deck um okay and with that he will move closer to the ship oh god and is the ice difficult terrain um, it is... Let me read it. Just to make sure. Difficult terrain until the end of his next turn. Okay. So, uh, Joe Hop isn't affected by that. Nice. Just so, tip knows. Oh, yeah, freedom of movement. Yeah. Nice. Um, though also, you... he's an ice skater from way back, so... Yeah, obviously. Yeah, from got his, figure for it. his time uh, ever not in the south. Um, <laughs> it, is that a concentration <laughs> spell, though? Freedom of movement? Nope. Nice. Okay, so if anybody was concentrating on anything, now would be the time to roll for it. Yeah, I've got my haste on. I need to do it. Oh, okay. I had been concentrating on uh, not dying to a bunch of Kraken, but it looks like that was disruption. So, Demarcus took 32, but I cut that down by 6, which meant that he took 26 damage, which means he had to get a constitution saving throw of 13, which he just did. Does that check out with everybody? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. I think he, so yeah, I think he passes. Um, also, I think haste might give you advantage on deck saves. But 
I will let you figure that shit out. Um, okay. That is the end for Thorgax. It is the sailor's turn. Uh, this guy is going to try to climb back aboard the ship and uh, I'm gonna make him make an acrobatics or athletics. Nope, I clicked acrobatics, it's fine. Yeah, he uh, falls back in the water. <laughs> Damon, you are up. Um, I did just want to mention the ice kraken that got moved to the bottom of the initiative order. Uh huh. He actually was, or they actually were between me and that sailor. Oh. So if that if that matters. Yeah, um, it probably does. I mean, since it's pretty low anyway, I guess I will uh, have it go. Um. Yeah. So this one is going. I failed the deck save either way, John. Just to let you know. Okay. For... So every everything stays the same, which is good. I don't have to change anything. Yep, all good. Um, Vosner's going to get a tentacle at him. Take some damage. Um, this sailor is going to get a tentacle at him. And uh, he's going to uh, die. And then Demarcus is going to get a tentacle. Do a sentinel attack on him as well. Oh, nice, yeah. So Demarcus um, Oh, and I think it. he has to roll a con save, which he'll probably make because I have... Oh, shit. It. You know what, though? He's still poisoned, isn't he? Or no? Yeah, he's poisoned. Ah. But he, he'll he make probably make his con save. But... Why don't you just try punching him uh, with your sentinel so we don't have to bother... Okay. <laughs> so I have a feeling you're gonna kill him. Uh, it'll save me a lot of math. Nope. Oh, never mind. All right, con save it is. Yeah, eighteen. Uh, my DC, I think it's sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. So he's beefy in that regard. So he's still poisoned. Um, I'm gonna. Let me see. Let me roll another d20 to see if he hits you with the other. Well, wait. What's your AC? 15? 15. Because he had disadvantage on that attack. Yeah, he would have hit you. Good to know. Okay. So. Oops, I had you roll it. My bad. So that is his turn. And it is Damon's turn now. Thank you, Damon. Uh, I don't think I cast Flame Shield, did I? Okay. Let me check all the way at the top. Um, Damon is going to just uh, see. hoping that with Terran back on board, he's able to handle himself now. Um, he's going to move uh, back across the deck. Uh, use like using one of his actions to to dash. Okay, so you're gonna get attacked here, and then also yep. that's difficult terrain in there. So, what if I was flying? Doesn't fucking matter then. All right. Cool. He's going to tentacle you. Oh. As you're flying through the air past the kraken, a tentacle reaches out and grabs you. Uh huh. And then... holds you in place. Um. Then I just uh, misty step. Also, you'd have to make a Constitution saving throw for haste. Ooh, damn. And it's a sixteen. Um, then for my turn, I get grappled by the crack. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, uh, just to give you a little bit of help on this, uh, I think Missile could help you out. I don't know what the range is on Flash of Insight or whatever. Flash of yeah, let me, let me check really quick. That's a good point. If it's 60, um, um, just based on where I had him randomly grapple you, uh, it would be in range. It's 30 feet, unfortunately. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So Damon uh, rockets across the ship confidently and an icy tentacle grabs him and crushes him and it distracts him enough that he loses his concentration and um, stuns himself effectively. And I think that's your turn then. Um, it is. Johoff, you are up. You just watched Damon get caught by a kraken. Yeah, cool. Uh, all right. Run, run. That dude's dead, right? Uh. uh the, sorry, the guy. The sailor. Dude. The sailor. The sailor there. Yep. Yep. Maybe. I'm just gonna run up there. Try to get this guy. Cool. This is going. This is going well. Um, yeah. Oh shoot! I just can't remember. Do I have to hit for flurry of blows? No, to... you don't have to. Oh, you don't oh, have that's to. right. I just have, to have attacked. All right. Maybe I'll hit him at least once this this time. That'd be great. Nope. You hit him. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How do you um? Uh, how do you want to describe killing this ice kraken? Yeah. So uh, Joe runs into the fray. Uh, and at first, he's kind of, you know, as, as the tentacles are whipping around him, he's not landing any blows. But after missing twice, he sees one tentacle that the ice kraken is using to grip onto the side of the ship, and he runs up the tentacle and uh, punches and then hits it with his hammer right in the face so it sinks back into the sea. Nice. And then, uh, I guess, like, dramatically leaps off on, back onto the boat then? Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'll right, say yeah, that I'll it slinks off the ship off the into ship. the water. I'm going to use uh, some movement then. Whoops, it's target. To move back sort of over this direction. Okay. Actually, maybe a little bit further. There. And that's it for me. Sweet. Fosner, you're up. Cool. Uh, first, I'm going to roll a d6 to see if I get my whirlwind back. I do. Um, and then I'm going um, for a bonus action um, burn a um, third level skill slot to regain some HP and what do I roll d12 or d10 and gain 21 health back I'm gonna fly over. Um, and punch this guy. Let's see. I'm gonna get it in between Damon and the captain. If I can get over there. Ooh. Um Then just attack him. Nice. And then my 
second one. Alright, I think that's all I can do. Uh, it's 1d8 per level of, for the spell slot you use. Not 1d10, but it's fine. Oh, sorry. That's fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll reroll it. Nice. Um, 13. So that is... So yeah, just remove four. Crack four. Yep. Um, so yeah, you run up to this uh, Kraken and give it the old heave-ho, slamming into it twice for some substantial damage. And uh, at the end of your turn, it strikes Celeron. And fails. And Demarcus, you are up. Uh, okay. Um, is so um, this is difficult terrain, correct? Uh, that you're on so currently. Yes. Twice my movement. Do I do I have to make like deck saves to move across it without falling on my ass? Or no, not? it's just you lose half your movement speed. Okay. Check. But you're hasted, um, so. Right. So I have uh, forty-five movement on this, right? Oh, it just should be basically back to normal, because. He's to doubles. Oh, this really? Okay, half. for some reason I thought I had 90. Okay, gotcha. Oh, 90 with the dash. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Um, hmm, that changes. Shit, I can't get over there then. Um, oh, that makes this easy. I. Let's see. Five, 10. I'm going to move up to this guy then. And. I hit him. Maybe. I can target him. Yeah, he's aim for the center of the thing. Okay. Yeah, you got him targeted. Oh, oh you had okay. him targeted. Okay. Hang on a second. Oh, there it is. See it? Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. And I think I'm gonna start off with. John, you, I just remembered, you sent um, Leif and I a text about something with bonus actions on haste. What was the conclusion of that? Oh, uh, it's just that if haste gets lost, like if, if it gets interrupted because mm -hmm. uh, okay. you fail the constant, uh, concentration check on it, uh, you can't use a bonus mm -hmm. action that turn because the rules as written gotcha. is that if, if in order uh, to I use see. a bonus action, you have to be able to use an action. Check. Gotcha. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a regular attack on this guy, and that probably won't do it. So I'll do my second attack. Oh, man. Um, yeah, and you then hit him. I'm gonna do a first level smite. And then with my haste action, I'm going to attack him again. Okay. Regular attack. And rolling low, just getting by. Yeah. And I'll put another uh, first level smite on that. And I'm going to use my bonus action to Misty Step away. Okay. And let's see, I'm gonna go to 510. Where can I get to here? One second, please. Yeah, I'm gonna get over to this kind of like, sure, out of out of the out of the ship, basically. 
Uh oh, I'm slowing down. I'll get there. Nice. Okay, that is my turn. Okay. At the end of your turn, the uh, Kraken goes to swing at you, but you're gone. And so he instead swings at this sailor. on the two and uh slams a very dark frozen tentacle into this sailor and uh yeah good call misty stepping it is this sailor's turn <laughs> who's just had the uh worst experience of his life who is going to uh use his hand axe to try to defend himself and not successfully he's going to swing it again Trying to beat away at the uh, giant tentacle slamming into him. Missile, you are up. Oh, you don't... the uh, massive dark figure was this direction. Ah, I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Missile starts to call out, Dark figure port! And then by then, uh, we've already seen it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to fly somewhere somewhat safer. Hopefully... That'll work. Let me bring Morty along with. Ba Bam. And then I'm going to take a test shot at the larger Kraken to see if my fire damage is going to do anything. Um, so let's cast Fire Bolt. And per Elemental Adept, if it has... Uh, I should ignore resistance to fire damage, but it yeah. could be immune, so I just want to make sure. Oh, sweet. Oh, nice. damn! But I rolled his... Oh yeah, wow, that's effective. Cool. Um, then that will be my turn, and I will be satisfied. Very well. Um, okay. Uh, is that that's all you're doing? Is just your action? You're not going to use Morty uh, for anything? Uh, Morty's got flamethrower equipped, and I don't want to uh, burn anybody near me. So got it, yeah. Got it. Dylan, can you describe to me what you're doing on that sail right now? Like, what's this look like? Oh, he's not on the sail anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. Oh, you moved off the sail? Oh, yeah. shit. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You, you heard from behind your head, though, DeMarcus. Uh, <laughs> as I, like, zipped into yeah. place. Excellent. All right. Um, Zalaron is so focused on this crack, and he's trying to fight it. Uh, he hasn't even seen the big one yet. And he uh, swings. Slashing this kraken. And then his short sword. And he yells, uh, we've almost got her down! Like, kind of encouraging the crew. And uh, the sailor is going to uh, try to swim towards the ship uh, as a giant kraken is sort of sinking to the depths next to him. And he is going to take another point of exhaustion. And it is this Kraken's turn, who is going to um, use his turn. Oh, he's not restrained. He is going to um, disengage and move back into the water. But he is going to take Damon with him into the water. Pulls him away, and um, yeah, I guess, t yeah, technically, oh, he wouldn't pull an attack of opportunity. So, uh, into the water, Damon plunges, and um, that is that ice kraken's turn. And he goes, like, underwater. Isolde. Well, that changes some things. <laughs> I was gonna shoot at him till he went underwater. Damn. Um. Fuck. I'll say that Damon is still like on the surface, but like there's a tentacle around him that's pulling him down. I'm just gonna say, uh, I'm not gonna make Damon go invisible yet. I was just gonna be like, he's almost <laughs> under. Yeah, For flavor, I, we she... I could be using my boots or my ring of water walking to try and... <laughs> yeah, like, you're water walking. being dragged under. Perfect. Yeah, you're standing, being tugged by this tentacle. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't think she has anything to help him unless she can uh, shoot at the Kraken. But she uh, is going to run in that direction uh, and see that she can't help and then just turn and shoot a guiding bolt at the big guy. Got it. Um, yeah, and whoever attacks him next has advantage. Nice. Yeah. Okay. This sailor is going to uh, attack with his crossbow. This sailor is also going to attack with his crossbow. And this sailor is going to attack with his crossbow. And it is Terran's turn. Um, Terran's also going to run to the edge where Damon went in. Um, but also he's going to kind of frantically look around and realize that there's nothing he can do right now. Um, and so he's going to turn to the big guy. Um, and drop a vitrolic sphere on him. Yeah. Um, What's up? What was that? Um, at the end of his turn, I think he takes another five d four acid. Got it. Okay. Um, at the end of Terran's turn, he is going to um swallow this uh sailor that he's already got grappled. And in one big bite, he chops him in half and then swallows him into his belly. And he's going to lash out at this guy. And crushes him instantly. And it is his turn, and uh, what's he has to make a save or what? Sorry. Uh, no, since he failed the save, he just takes another 5d4, if I remember right. Oh, okay. So he takes another 17 acid. Okay, yeah. He will take that acid damage, and he will summon another bunch of hail on his turn. Damn. Um, I'm just jumping back in, John. Um, if it's Holy on top shit. of me, I don't know. A 19 failed? Oh, okay. And so... I think missile's a, down. Yeah. Missile, who was flying through the air, gets pelted. Let's just make sure I got all the saving throws right. So, Johoff, first of all... Um, resistance to cold, so we take a reduced damage, but did he fail the save? No, he saved with no, a 28. Saved. Beautiful. Which should also mean no damage at all. Yep. I will fix the damage to Joaf. Um, Terran should have only taken 23 damage. He I did. I don't know if that's how it worked. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it did. Um, anybody else? Water elemental or air elemental, that looks right. Zellerin. Okay. Okay. I think all that's right. So what happens is, um, this ground, by the way, clears up. 
and another big storm of hail comes flying through the air as this giant tentacle monster summons it upon the ship and it just slams into missile who's flying through the sky and as it does he um, plummets to the ground and hits the deck um, with a big thud and uh, automatically fails one death save oh. bummer and is unconscious. Uh, Taryn, were you concentrating on anything? Nope. Uh, Zolda? Nope. Very cool. Okay. And that is the end of Thurgax's turn. The sailor is going to try once again. And this time he gets up on the top of the ship. And uh, Damon. It is your turn. You are currently grappled, about to be pulled underwater, and being held up just barely by your boots, which sort of bought you some time as it's like pushing against the water. And what I can do right now is just continue to struggle, right? Yeah, you can contest the grapple. Ace. Ace. In. Um. Because that doesn't take an action. Are you from the haste? He was last turn, right? Oh, because in the description it says um, if haste ends, when the spell ends, the target can't move or take actions until after its next turn. Oh. So. Well, like it got interrupted on, on your on... own turn, though, right? Yeah, so that's that's what I was wondering. If, like, last turn counted as the whole turn, or if it's extra bad to lose haste on your turn. I'm going to say that... If it it would take away two turns, and I think the goal of it is to take away one turn, so I don't I think that would be super, super unfortunate. So I I think yeah I think you're back to normal. Okay. Now. Okay. Um. Yeah. Then I will just um. Um. Missy step. Uh. Back up to the boat. I mean, I, could, I guess I could see it either way. It just, that doesn't sound fun to me. Like, it already sucked that you lost your turn. I mean, yeah. So I, I'm fine with it either way. Yeah. Uh, just the way it sounded, it sounded like, yeah, you, uh, you're you going to miss the next turn. Um, So if I can, then I'll miss you step yeah. back to the boat. Do it. And try and regroup with everybody else. Um, and, uh, I think, yeah, I'll just, like, look around at everybody, and then I'll look at at Isolde and say, uh, orders, Captain. Damn. And then that is my turn. Okay. Um, Johoff, you're up. All right, like any good guy with a death wish, I'm going to run this guy. And uh, do my damnedest to bop him. What a roll on a critical hit. Um, <laughs> well, you got full you damage got full from damage. the other thing. That's true. And then... Uh, I am... Oops. I'm gonna skedaddle away. Okay. okay. And I think that's it for me. Very cool. Bosner, you're up. Awesome. Um, okay. Um, 
So Vosner's gonna burn a fourth level uh, spell slot and heal himself. Actually, it'll be a fifth level then. Uh, five. myself 22 okay uh, I'm going to then fly over wait it should be 4d8 right because it's one level per spell slot or one level per and I did a fifth level spell. oh I thought you said fourth my bad yeah I said fourth originally and then I changed my mind <clears throat> Smart. So sorry. No worries. Um, and I'm tracking that. So, so go over here. It's 50 feet. Um, feet. Uh, actually, can I do it at a angle? I want to fly. How how tall is this thing out of the water? Like how high is it? Uh, I'm gonna say forty feet out of the water. Sweet. So I'm gonna go fifty feet over and forty feet up. Sure. Um. So now I'm forty feet in the air. So I don't get hit with uh, that thing again. Um. And then just um, bop it. Okay. Yeah. And because of that, I guess anyone that's below me technically is not in range of my sentinel, correct? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Okay. That's what I figure. So one. Last one. Yeah. Cool. That's all I can do. Okay. At the end of your turn, the... Kraken is going to try to smack you out of the sky. He'll probably do so. And he smashes into your uh, air elemental form, dissipating you to almost a mere cloud, but you remain uh, whole. Demarcus is. Uh, oh, uh, is it. Are his attacks magical? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, wait, let me see how much it did. Um, yep. It is magical. Okay. Uh, Demarcus. Man. Are you okay? Can you hear me okay? Yep. Alright. Um, I'm gonna run 20 feet up. Parted. There we go. Um, and I'm gonna attack him. Like I do. Nice. And I'll put a first level smite on it. My last one. And continue hitting things with hammers, hopefully. Oh. Gonna happen sometime. And then with my uh, haste attack, another one. Jeez, my rolls are so low. Yep. Alright, and much like last time, I shall Misty step away. Were you out on spell slots? Used... Uh, I saved all my misty steps, so that I've used two of them, and I've got one second level left. And that's got like it. all my spell slots, I think. Got it, got it, got yep. it. I was saving my misty steps because I assumed I was going to be trying to get out of the water somehow. Makes Things sense. Uh... All right, so I'm going to move with that 30. Let's see, that's 20 back. And so with the 30, I'm going to just try to get like as far on the other side of the ship as I can. Basically. Sure. All right, uh, that's all I got. Go ahead. Missile, it is your turn. You are unconscious. Make a death saving throw. Okay. 
Oh. Wait, no, that... That... Sh I failed one and then... Oh, is that because I crit failed? Oh, no. Ah. Uh, well. Sad. Oh, my God. Bye, y'all. <laughs> I mean, we still got a minute to bring them back. And... This'll... Bleeds Dies. out on the deck of the ship <coughs> on a sheet of hail and ice and splintered wood. Morty wails. Yeah, Morty's still alive. Fuck. Alright. Zalaron turns, uh, turns around seeing the kraken sort of descend into the water and uh, looks to your group and says uh, oh that was a close one eh and then he looks and says oh and uh, pulls out his heavy crossbow and uh, points it at the big guy and shoots hitting and yep that is his turn the sailor is going to half movement speed to the side of the boat. Third point of exhaustion. And this Kraken. Isolde, it is your turn. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, she was um, running towards Missile to heal him. And um, she's going to try to use her Preserve Life ability to split HP between them and realize that it's not working. Um, she's going to give 25 to him and 25 to herself. So I'll do the 25 uh, on myself. And then... Uh, as a bonus action, do healing word on Terran. Okay. Um, but she's just kneeling on the ship deck right now. Uh, healing word, where are you? And then add an additional four. Okay. Thank you. Four. Okay. Uh, this sailor is going to uh, shoot his crossbow at the ice kraken. Or the giant kraken. Terran, it is your turn. Alright. Um, I'm going to start the lightning bolt, I think. Yeah, I use Preserve Life. Uh, so Taryn just launches a lightning bolt at him. Yeah, it hits. It zaps through a bunch of tentacles in the air and uh, fries some of his tentacles. And uh, yeah. And then he backs away. Okay. At the... Let's see. Hit. Pause there. The end of Terran's turn. The big guy is going to swing again at Vosner. And knock him out of elemental form. Uh, and you were 50 feet up. Kurt? 40 feet up, sorry. Okay, 40. Yeah, um, you are going to instantly... I guess technically he hits you, it goes through your elemental so it doesn't grapple you, but yeah. as it, like, after it plows through the elemental, uh, you sort of 
reshape into normal uh, human form, and uh, but you're not grappled, and you just begin to fall into the icy water, and the uh, on this creature's turn, it is going to disengage, move away from the ship, and s go under the water. And it is effectively the combat is over. And the bitch is gonna charge our ship. And you guys get a soft amount of breathing room. And once again, missile is dead. In front of the group. <laughs> Once could, I, uh, could I dive into the water as I fall? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Would I, how much damage would I take? Um, you're not going to take any damage from falling into the water. I'm just going to say it. But you are going to hit the water with a splash. And it is going to make a constitution saving throw. Yeah, so you hit the water and it's frigid cold, but you are able to sort of like keep yourself together and you don't take a point of exhaustion. Um, how do you get back on the ship? Can you just describe it? All right. Uh, I'm going to come back to the surface of the water um, and uh, I guess find the rope ladder or where like the oars are and just scramble my way back up the ship okay yeah um technically oh, you um, i have a spell or i have a cantrip that i can use um i'm gonna use could i use thorn whip to uh whip myself back up there more quickly um yeah i mean i don't want to get too we still with it. It. no um i was just saying like oh can i i yeah, can I help Vosner? That's where Demarcus would be. Okay, I mean, yeah. Because I was watching the monster, so I would have saw it, like, smack him down. And my first thought would have been, like, trying to get Vosner out of the water, basically. Okay, I'll just say between Demarcus and Vosner's thorn whip, you guys are able to pull him out of the frigid water and onto the deck of the ship, where you witness the rest of this scene with Missile on the ground um, next to the rest of the group. And sort of a half delirium. His parting words that are barely above a whisper are, Curse this mortal flesh. And then he, like, <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, Taryn will look at his older and say, Can you bring him back? Yeah, she is pulling, like, a bag off of her belt, but her hands are shaking, and so 600 GP worth of small diamonds are now, like, rolling around on the deck in front of her. And she's picking up uh, enough and like placing them on top of missile in a hurry um, and when she has enough she'll put her hands over the top of them and then close her eyes uh, and pray to Omater to bring missile back so the role the system we came up with was it's a D it's it's um you have to roll a 10 or higher to bring somebody back, I think we said. And then that gets improved by the amount of levels you've spent together since you haven't uh, had to resurrect. So you had a bunch of levels before and then Missile died. And then you guys just leveled up one time. So the bonus should be um, if Missile rolls a 9 or higher, he comes back. I roll it. Just roll a d20. Um. Oh wait, it should be, should be eleven or higher to come back, and then now it should be ten or higher. So yeah, roll a d20 on a ten or better. Missile is revived. All right, fingers crossed, y'all. Oh, oh God! God. Shit. And as she res tries to resurrect him, missile's corpse. What? What did we say the rule was about Ray's dead? 
Or the, the um, is it called raised at the fifth level one? Yeah, it doesn't change. You only get one chance. Um, the only thing that raised dead gives advantage on is if they're dead longer, you can bring them back. Ah, okay. And that is the end of Missile. And Mortimer sort of sits awkwardly on the deck. Um, not doing anything, I guess. Fuck. It should work. Like, he, he would want to come back, right? He would want to come back. As you guys are sort of uh, standing around him, you feel the um, effect of the magic items that he'd just put on you start to fade. Um, Damon, your boots start to uh, sort of fall apart. And uh, I forget what other buffs were on other people. I think just that for now. Morty inverts and like his legs like curl up on one another. <laughs> no. I was going to try to adopt him, but. Oh, never mind. <laughs> we wreck on. It doesn't happen. He springs upright again. <laughs> and uh Zalaron comes over to your group and uh sort of puts a hand on your guys on uh, Isolde's shoulder and nods and then goes to uh sort of grab his uh the corpses of his men and sort of put them in a pile on the ship. Um Terran lets out like a breath he didn't know he was holding and then just kind of stands up and looks over walks over to the edge of the book and just or the boat and just kind of stares out into the expanse yeah Joe gets up and walks over to the rail as well Salaron is just uh, working with his men to care for the dead, and they say some prayers and then throw the bodies over the ship. Vosner uh, puts his hand on Izzy's shoulder. Sorry, I was muted before. Um, and he says, uh, you did everything you could. It's not... It's not all your fault. It doesn't make it any better. I know. I just don't know what to do now. I'm, I'm not sure either. But there's pretty powerful magic out there. I'm sure we can think of something. But for now, if uh, maybe maybe we should put him below deck. Yeah, I think you're right. Damon uh, is just kneeling down next to him, and he'll turn up to Izzy and say, "The sarcophagus." don't think we have those kind of resources. Yeah. I see. Guess, uh... He'll pick up, uh, missile. Uh, Vazner will pick up missile. And, uh... He'll just say to Izzy and Demarcus, um... We probably should patch as many people up may not be the last of these things. I'll be back as soon as possible. You know, take our little buddy downstairs. Yeah. 
All right. What does Mortimer do in this moment? He's just staring at the corpse, like... Uh, he really only knows how to respond to Missile's command, so he's almost, like, like just paralyzed. Could I wave him to follow after? Will he follow? Um... Probably not currently. I would say that, um... Along Although he's... with the items that Missile made that are sort of all starting to kind of unwind and fall apart, um, you notice Mortimer as well begins to sort of break down and eventually enough things sort of fall apart that he does as Dylan described. He sort of falls on his back and his legs clench like a spider. Poor little buddy. Izzy is offering uh, healing to the soldiers and to Zalron. Yeah, he gratefully takes it. And then uh, he kind of uh, goes below deck to um, work with the rowers and the rest of the people on the ship who are like trained fighters. Um, to sort of get the ship back together and uh, continue onward. Is there any sign at all of the big Kraken thing? The storm in the sky has sort of let up and all that's left is sort of a faint, like, uh, light snow and there is uh, no sign of the massive creature so are we kind of like back underway sort of john or? yeah yeah okay. things are starting to sort of get back to normal um, once we kind of get back to normal, I think DeMarcus would find an opportunity to go below deck to where Missile's body is and go through all of his stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> LOL, man. <laughs> You'll find nothing. All right. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, this is, uh... There's some shit going down here. Okay, so... <laughs> most of his items are infusions. You find his arcane firearm, which is a staff that's sort of hollowed out and used as a, as a, as a weapon. But it's... Um, it, you notice that, like, upon his death, its functionality seems to fade, and it starts to just look like a normal staff. Um, as though the yeah. sort of essence of missiles magic is being is slowly falling away from all of these items, and you find a dagger on his person that's a normal dagger, but then you find another dagger that is in it has a sigil on it to Kelimvor, and it is sort of uh, martial looking in the shape of maybe uh, something that you would see a knight use or have on their belt. It's very regal and um, sophisticated looking. And it's, uh, it was just kind of hidden away on Missile's person. And you find also a potion of greater healing um, and <laughs> a little bag Full of a small <laughs> substance, uh, like a like a uh, a small sort of reddish powder that you have not you don't identified, and okay. um, um, and also a bag of holding, which has all a bunch of your shit in it. Yeah, um, you know, Demarcus was looking for like you know curious things. He's not taking anything except that Kelmvor dagger, obviously. Yep. <laughs> um, and I mean, 
he he like can I do I want to do some kind of like a check on it to try to like discern like if I know anything about like a dagger like this or is, is, it, is it something that like the common sort of like Kellum Vor it artifact lo that it looks like to you Doom guides wear or something? Yeah, it looks to you like a powerful relic from, like, uh, Holy War or something. I mean, it looks impressive to you. Like something, um, like, that's, like, a superior would have that you s or would sort of normally be impressed mm -hmm. by. Like, DeMarcus would be kind of excited to find something like this. Okay. Um... I'm also at that point going to use because I've been suspicious of missile forever. Um, I'm gonna use a divine sense and try to detect any object that has been uh, like like what a hallow spell would do. Anything that's been like cursed or consecrated in some way. Yeah. Um, can you? S yeah, I'm finding it right now. Okay, let's take a five minute break. I have to figure out some shit. But post okay. it in the chat. Yeah, I will. Woof. <laughs> For real, man. I, you know, I, I had an inkling. I had an inkling no. this was a possibility, but. I've had it with these man. motherfucking Krakens. For real. These motherfucking <laughs> ships. I'm gonna roll up a Kraken Hunter Barbarian and. Yeah. We'll come back. <laughs> Oh yeah. Good. Yes. Damon's Damon's gonna get along real well with him. <laughs> I'm not like of angry how, like, robots. Last time you died from an attack, and it's because you made a reckless decision. And this time you're like playing it like safe and like mm -hmm. hanging out in yeah. the back, just lobbing shots at him. Mm -hmm. And still nothing. That was that was really rotten luck, though. Just all around the the, oh, the crit fail and yeah. Yeah. And then a six. Woof. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two bad rolls is all it takes. So true. I'm only a little bit bummed, so, you know. Is the spell DC dependent on the player who reses it? I guess that, that would be a question for John. Because Vosner, if he had prepared it, has Revivify as well. I think um, you get, like, one shot at it. Regardless. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess it would just be for that for the character in general. Okay. Yeah. yeah, probably the only difference would be if, like, our characters had traveled with the person for different lengths of time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think, like, in-game it's like the soul makes one decision of whether or not it's to return. Yeah. So. Yep, no this, gods this out here on the ocean. <laughs> they were just proud for you this time actually. and were like... Yeah, right. They, they were prepped for Missile to die this time, and they just had his construct body waiting for him in the afterlife. Like, <laughs> and mechanics, check, yeah. Check out this shiny new body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, delightful! <laughs> they just stuck him in the body and ushered him into, like, the Divine Library. And, like, come yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, We just talked about this. Far off, though, in a distant yeah. land of Barovia, there's a bard who a chill just went through their spine. Oh. oh no. I am glad though that we were able to have all that RP last episode because there were some dope conversations yeah. that Missile had. Remember That's what them I was fondly. thinking, like if Demarcus dies this battle, which I was kind of planning on him. Dying, <laughs> um, I was like, well, at least he said like some. He he dropped some hints to people about like RP stuff that would be useful to go forward with. <sighs> Woof. Well, wow. what does the squad need now? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do you have backup character ideas? I did, kind of, sort of. no. But yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to keep talking like this every week, so I might... I do. I know the answer to that. I, come on. <laughs> what, we don't have another sibling of Missile that is a barbarian <laughs> that specializes yeah. in killing... Gristle. Gris yeah. Gristle. Gristle. Oh. Gristle large. <laughs> no, I want to be like someone with the most obnoxious act, like English accent, like straight up like London orc sounding. <laughs> What's this then? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 
fucking thing. It's perfect. <laughs> like a oh, chest sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> My Tori's over there going no. <laughs> <laughs> that is the uh, then that's the one that we need. That's exactly yes, the one me lord. Need. Anything from Warcraft too. Yeah. Be good. I'm not opposed to another Ludovic though. We'll we'll keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, I just want there to be like a set of cousins who is like job in the Ludovic like family tree is to just hunt down whoever <laughs> killed the last Ludovic to go out. <laughs> it's a bit of a tradition in our family. <laughs> <laughs> just like the monster hunter like group. Okay. So uh uh welcome back. Or I guess I was probably the only person that left. Anyways, Demarcus, when you cast Divine Sense you cannot tell anything special about this dagger. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would probably just steal it then. Uh, I would, like, wrap it in a cloth and put it in my bag. Okay. You do not equip it or attune to it then? Nope. I mean, it's, I know, like, meta-wise, I think I understand that it's the kind of thing that I can attune to, but I don't know if DeMarcus really has any reason to think of it that way, per se. Does, okay. that, does that make sense? Yeah, let me look about up, up how attunement works, the specifics. Okay. Go. Like, DeMarcus is looking at it like... He doesn't even know what to do with it right now. He doesn't really know, like, why Missile would have it. It doesn't seem familiar to him. It's super interesting. He was slightly expecting to find something, like, nefarious, and he has a lot of, kind of, like, contradictory thoughts about Kelimvor right now, and so he kind of just wants to, like, hide it and find some way to, like, think about it and understand it. Okay. Attuning to an item requires a creature to spend a short rest focused <laughs> only on that item while being in physical contact with it. So, um, okay. it can take if the I, like, sat around it can take the form of weapon practice or meditation or some sort of other appropriate activity. So it's not like you don't have to just stare at it. You could do you could put it in part of a ritual or something. Um. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We could say that he attunes to it. Um, he would attune to it eventually. Okay, uh, we'll just save that long, for the just night. Just through kind of like invest. Yeah. Okay, cool. I and mean, he's going to spend time thinking about it and investigating it and working with it for sure. Okay. Um, very well. So, so DeMarcus brings Marcus. up a question. Yep. Did Joe yep. ever actually attune to his hammer? Or does he need to? Um,. That's a great question. I'm going to say, yeah, for it probably requires attunement. Yeah. Um, and given how you guys kind of focused on that and then solved the riddle, I sort of fast paced the attunement. I don't really I don't care much for fair. like the hour long staring at the thing requirement. Like if you intend to attune to it, I don't have any problem with just letting you attune to it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Just wanted to check. Yeah, I mean, you know, in when DeMarcus is confident that he is, like, alone, he would, you know, at some point over the next 48 hours, he would be holding it and investigating it and messing around with it. So it would happen okay. anyway. Very cool. And we will get to that situation <laughs> when we get to that situation. Um, wow. This, you know, you, you try to prep for D&D, &D and it's impossible. <laughs> it's literally impossible. Okay, so missile is now um, sort of. Did you preserve the body, or do you just put it? In I the... do not have that prepared, but it is very cold here. All right. Well, we'll just say missile is slowly decomposing at a cool. sub normal rate uh, in the hull of the ship. And uh, the rest of you are now atop the ship, and things have sort of continued back to normal. Um, a few sailors are brought up from below to sort of man various posts up top. Uh, 
and uh, Sauron is back at the helm of the ship. What is Damon doing? Um, Damon is just uh, patrolling the top deck of the ship, eyes peeled for the first sign of a kraken. Very well. What is Taryn doing? Um, Taryn will spend like probably like four to five minutes to an hour just like solemnly stand staring over the ocean, not keeping his eyes peeled, just kind of like glazed over. And then he'd probably go down to where Missile is, um, but like he'd give it a lot of time that like he wouldn't think anybody else is there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, Then yeah. he'd probably just spend some time just kind of like standing over the body, kind of like um, alone with his thoughts near Missile. And then he'd kind of probably poke around and look for Missile's research. Yeah. You would find... Um, well, hold on. I guess this is a question for Dylan. Um, we talked about how he has a perfect memory... Um, but it only extends uh, to for like a month. Uh, mm. Would all of the automaton research be compiled somewhere in like a book? I think most of my notes would be like diagrams and blueprints just because that was the primary objective was to eventually like create my own <laughs> that I would I would be more willing to commit that stuff to, to pen and paper than, sure. than anything else. So he would find quite a few diagrams and engineering schematics and so forth. Yeah. And an unusually large amount of diagrams of various shapes of jaws and teeth and force diagrams to, like, optimize <laughs> chewing. God damn. <laughs> Robots don't need to eat, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> but they should. Yeah. All right. <laughs> forever, forever a battle over the lore of robot eating. <laughs> I should just surrender. Um, I should yes and you. So, um... Yeah, Taryn, you find a book full of complex uh, diagrams using mathematics and uh, notation that, frankly, is beyond Taryn's comprehension as a non-int-based character, but you yeah. could uh, sort of make an investigation check to see how much you can discern from it just from a first glance. Yeah, um, he'll kind of glance through it investigation mm -hmm. and he's looking for like not like mechanical things but more like stuff around the life force that he would assume is part of this yeah and, you are like you struggle to figure out like where like the organization system of the book even yeah well he'll kind of pocket it and then walk away and go back to staring out over the ocean. Yeah. Anybody else want to rob this corpse? No, I'm just kidding. It totally <laughs> makes sense. I was just... The image I, of I each say... one of you one time, once at a time, just coming down like, and I'll take this. Okay. I mean, Boss we're not cool. going after, like, the adventuring gear and, like, the magic items, so, you know. doesn't have much of that. Did Damon take the um, bag of holding? Or not Damon, Damon would... Marcus. Well, it's fine either way. No, Damon no, would probably... just put it there. Yeah, Damon would have like scooped up the remains of Morty and maybe tucked them into his cloak, but that's all he would have taken. Okay. Yeah. So Damon has the sort of broken apart remains of Mortimer. Yeah. Vosner will go down after uh, everyone goes down after keeping an eye out for multiple krakens. Um, to uh, lay some lay some flowers on him. Like he's done in the past, and then return to the top deck of the the ship. Yep, missile lays under the in the hull of the ship or whatever, um, on top of a on top of a crate maybe, with a nice sheet over him and uh, some flowers on top. we didn't stuff him in a barrel 
That usually keeps things. Woof. Too soon. No, I'm just laughing because now both you and Dylan have uh, suggested packing him in salt. <laughs> What's Joe Hop doing? So Joe Hoff uh, will go down below, not to find Missile, but long enough to find a bottle of booze. And then we'll return up to the rail, pop it open, and start drinking heavily while staring out over the ocean. Yeah, you find uh, some, like, nice booze but it's in a crate that's clearly being delivered and uh there's fine like, with me i'll crack it open yeah there's like a guy standing there who goes oh uh you uh all right and it just <laughs> lets you walk by yeah definitely any attempt to stop me would have been met with like the mother of all glares at that yeah. point yeah so. he backs down And what is Isolde doing? Um, she kind of wandered over to this area and just sat on the deck with her back against uh, this little wall here. And uh, she's going to cast Sending to talk to her dad. Okay. And... Uh, the message has changed from what she originally wanted to say. Um, but she's just going to say, Hi, Dad. Um, I'm coming home. Me and some friends. I'm so sorry I haven't written you. I've heard news of home. Are you okay? And there's sort of a slow response, and you get Isolde. You're alive. I don't come back. There's nothing left for you here. Move on. And that's it. Cold. Damn. She's uh, just going to sit there and cry for a little bit. If Damon is in range where he would, like, be aware that she is crying, he would go over and just sit with her quietly. Are you on top deck, is he? Yeah, I'm over sitting next to the wall that uh, goes down to the bow of the ship. Um, yeah, DeMarcus's potion would have worn off a long time ago, so, you know, I don't think he's going to be top deck-like at all. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys are acting like it's a beautiful day out. It's crazy. She doesn't mind much. I mean, to be fair, Taryn thinks it's a beautiful day out, so... Yeah, fair. Taryn also is pretty invulnerable. Um, Izzy's gonna take the silver mirror that we bought in Luskin out of her bag. And... Gosh, would she do that? Yeah, she would. Uh, she's gonna try to scry on her father. Okay, can you cast the spell? Hey. Yeah. Also, make sure you cast sending too, just to keep track. 
targeted token before I'm gonna scry Damon. Get him. Get scryed. <laughs> oh, he saves. Um. <laughs> no. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess they do get a saving throw, right? They do. Yep. Modified by how well you know the target. Uh, so you're probably like second-hand knowledge of your father. Oh no, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So, how's that math work? The save they have, they have a minus five. Yes, yeah. So they're trying to beat my DC, which is seventeen. Oh wow. So basically, they'd have to beat a DC twenty-three then. Twenty-two. I mean, <laughs> who knows how math works, anyways? Uh, <laughs> in oh, in my game, uh, fives and sixes are interchangeable. So yeah, I'm just gonna say there's no possible way he could succeed because he does not have a high enough wisdom. And um, yeah, so what do you see? Um, target knows. Essentially creates like a little orb uh, within ten feet of the target that can see and hear, like it's me. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just gonna say that this sort of gives you a perspective of where he's at and what he's doing and like the room he's in, basically. Mhm. Mm and I can hear everything. <sighs> okay. You can see your father in the inn that your family ran um but it looks run down and rather empty and your father is sitting on the floor by himself crying mm. and that's all he does for the rest of the time he never says anything just Interesting. sits by himself weeping. <sighs> Alright. Good to know. She'll just kind of sit there with Damon and, you know, try to pull herself together, and, but she'll sit there kind of quietly. watch what everyone else is doing on deck. Do you, like, see what's happening in the mirror? Is that how it works? Like, I don't know. Because like, I think, I mean, I'll I'm wondering I mean, I think if that would Damon make sense. would also be able to see that. Yeah. I was going to say, Damon, while you're, while you're doing that, Damon is, like, bringing forth his little owl to, like, uh, keep watch for him so he can sit there with you while still not being totally oblivious to what's going on around the ship. Cute. But yeah, I like the effect of like watching it in the mirror. Yeah, that's what you do then. Cool. Yeah, I'll just sit there and watch it for as long as it lasts. And when it fades, yeah. you... it cuts out of the mirror and you're stuck with a mirror image looking at yourself an older more scarred uh, very sad looking as older yeah I'll put the mirror away and uh, I'll just turn to Damon and say I wonder how far we are now from fire shear Seems like we're moving at a quick pace again. Not quickly enough. It will be good to be off the ship. Yeah. I don't think I like the water. I used to. What changed? Well, our companions, I'm sure, for the same reason that you don't like the water. 
Ah. Uh, yes, it seems to take much and offer very little. Well, at least for my people, it was, um, it offered most of our livelihood from fishing and whatnot, but I hadn't really seen anything like that before. I don't even know what that thing was. Of course, I mean no offense. I, however, find nothing of use under these waters. <laughs> she smiles at him. Well, then we will stick to the land for as long as we can. Do you... Yes. Do you have any idea of how Missile would want to be buried? Unfortunately, I do not. It was my understanding that Missile probably did not want to be buried. Yeah. I suppose in the eventuality that he achieved his goal, he would not have had concerns one way or the other regarding what was done with the meat husk he would have left behind. That's fair. It's strange, I was very certain of what E wanted in terms of that. Well, he always used the term a ditch, but I think the woods were sufficient, but I really didn't know Missile that well, I think. Yes. Perhaps some sort of metal formed casket would suit his personality if not his desires. Yes, I think that's fair. We'll see if there's a metal worker in Fire Shear. That sounds good. Perhaps they will have some merchant who might sell me something more effective at slaying these abominations. I don't know, you seemed pretty efficient out there. It was just, yes. um... It's always hard to keep an eye everywhere on the battlefield, but especially when... There's things like that, and you're in an unfamiliar place, and... Indeed. You know, I have okay. often pondered what purpose I might serve once I no longer have had clear direction from Multanus, or then from Marin, but after today, I feel I will always at least have something I can do and feel productive. What is that? Kill as many of those things as I can possibly find. <laughs> well, I think that's a worthy endeavor. You are strangely suited to it since the water, you know, it's not like you're going to drown. Yes, and this ring helps. The boots were helpful as well, but, well. Yeah. It will be strange not to have his tinkerings. Yes. He was, uh, a good problem solver, and I feel like we're still left with a lot of problems. Indeed. He helped me in numerous ways. I would not be nearly as efficient as I am, were it not for the machinations of Master Missile. Yes, how will we repair you now, if you need it? We will have to read his notes, I guess. Yes, that seems like the best possible option for the time being, although not likely a reliable one. I suppose it will become important to seek out artificers in towns we visit, in the eventuality that one is needed. Yeah, fair. Well, 
I wouldn't worry about it. We'll figure out how to take care of it. Yes. I am not concerned with it. Not at the moment, at any rate. Good. How do you feel with your homeward journey nearing its conclusion? Conclusion... Yeah, Forgive it feels me. a bit like that. I'm not sure. It's been an interesting I... mix of, of foreboding and excitement, and it's... It's almost all foreboding now. These are dark times, and I am saddened to hear that. I will be here to support you with whatever we may face. I appreciate that, Damon. I think that is something that I will always trust that I can rely on. But I think for now I am going to go and, and lay down. Of course, Captain. I will remain up here a while longer. Yes, please keep watch. It makes me nervous that that thing is still out there. And uh, I'll just nod, and then I'll get back up and start patrolling again. I will go downstairs. All right. What is it like downstairs, John? I, I would probably be like sitting on the floor, like short resting in the room where Missile's body is, kind of reading my book and considering the dagger. Yeah. Um, you want to do the attunement thing with the dagger? Sure. It would probably happen if I mean the thing. If I was like alone down there, I would be probably in a position to be attuned to it. If I wasn't alone in that room, though, um, I think I would just keep it kind of like off of myself. So it's going to happen eventually. So you can just yep. plug it in whenever you want. I would the say the main question was. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I would say if you're if you want to sort of like find your sleeping bunk or whatever, uh, your hammock, and sort of sit in there by yourself. Uh, you could basically be private enough that nobody would be around since nobody's sleeping at this time. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay, and as you do, you sort of uh, focus on the dagger, sort of tossing it in the air, looking over it. Um, and um, after holding it for a while, you hear a voice in your head that says, Hello there. Marcus it says, who are you? The name is Aureus. And who are you? Marcus Sonspark. A noble name. What was your purpose talking the missile? To help him. Why? Did you say why? Yeah. He said, because we had similar goals. What was your goal? To live. Forever? Ideally. Because it's not very fun being stuck in a dagger. Marcus takes the dagger and stops holding it and he like covers it. I don't know if he would do that actually, he has a strong reaction to this. 
He takes the dagger and stabs it into the wall next to him and just stares at it. And you hear in your head, is that how you solve all your problems? I got killed him for a dagger. It's what you would open up. It's what you would pick up. It's what you would want. And then it turns into a short looking artificer uh, dagger with sort of gears on it. And then it sort of expands in the wood and changes into a crudely cut barbarian knife. And he says, people only pick up what's familiar to them. Marcus takes the dagger and I'm just going to say what he would have made up his mind to do right now and then you can intervene in any way you like. Uh, he would have made up his mind to take the dagger out of the wall, uh, out of the sort of wall slash, you know, hull of the ship and um, storm top deck and throw it overboard. Yeah. Um make a wisdom saving throw okay so you come i think the... it's a 14 if that changes anything because it's no. plus one from yeah. the uh protection ring so you run <clears throat> to the top of the deck and you pull the dagger from your belt and you hurl it into the ocean. And in your head, you've sort of resolved that you um, are casting this into the water. But in the back of the mind, of your mind, you realize that you've thrown your spare dagger into the water and you've stored this other dagger on your person compelled by some force that feels other than your own will <laughs> and everyone Marcus, on the, staring off uh, at the water for a good long time anybody who witnessed that would have just seen demarcus hurl a dagger into the water <laughs> damon would just ask demarcus are you all right Um, DeMarcus wouldn't respond. He continues to look off at the water. And as far as Damon knows you, that means yes. So he just keeps patrolling. <laughs> um, DeMarcus, after he kind of like, you know, puts, puts together what happened a little bit, he would sort of like ask in his mind, so I can't be rid of you then. Not that easily. And frankly, you haven't even heard me out. Oh, start talking. And um, I will send you sort of yeah, that's fine. We can save a it. Uh, detailed conversation between you and him for the future. But we yeah. will off screen that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, I was going to try to save that so that you could build no, it. No, 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 I liked it. it. Um, I'm like fine it with it. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Intrigue. And uh, as DeMarcus is sort of standing there, uh, Zalaron turns to whoever's nearest to him and says, uh, you know, it's kind of rude to just throw stuff in the ocean, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, um, you hear out loud, um, Zalaran's men sort of point to, um, the shore, which is starting, starting to become, um, 
like come around a bend you've sort of been in sight of the shore for this whole trip but now you're starting to see sort of a noticeable um bay that you're moving into and uh Zalaran says uh oh we've made it to uh fire shear everybody get your stuff together and um you guys have arrived at the port to fire shear what time is it? Did we sleep on this boat? It was a straight shot, and it was like you left. What? When did you leave? Was it at we night? We left at night. Okay, yeah. so it was an overnight thing. You slept on the ship, and then you woke up to the fight, I think. Got it. And uh, that's how I'm going to play it anyways. And um, then you guys uh, fought, and then now it is probably the afternoon. And now I can do the do make this now you can navigate to the fire share map. Do do Whoa And sort of as you arrive at the dock, um Zalaran says So uh it's not a lot going on in town. It's kind of a small place, but uh, of course, uh, I live on the south side of town there, and uh, there's the Silver Triangle where you can find food and lodging. And uh, if you need any blacksmith stuff, there's always Ham Avers Place. Oh, also, uh, that lady I was telling you about, Dashara, with the uh, Griffin, she's on the kind of northeast side of town, sort of outside of. Uh, well, she doesn't get along with most people, so... Anyways. Uh, my men are here going to uh, unload the cargo, so if you can feel free to go on without me. And, uh... Yeah, I'll see you in town. Thank you very much. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thanks for uh, sort of saving the day there. I don't think we would have been able to uh, fend off the Kraken without you. And he pauses and he says, And I'm uh, real sorry about your friend there. That's, I mean, we lost some men too, but... Well, I mean, it doesn't make it any easier, I suppose. Yeah, never is easy, but thank you. Of course. Well, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, head back to Luskin here in a couple days, so if uh, you go on, good luck to you. Uh, it's, uh, you'll need it where you're headed. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, you guys sort of get off the ship. What are you doing with the uh, missile's body? Are you just carrying it? I suppose so. We've got to find a place to bury him, I guess. Marcus is very adamant that he carries missile's body, and you guys would probably be able to tell that he is looking at it like in a very sympathetic way. Way more than when missile's corpse was just top deck. Do you have thoughts on what we should do, Demarcus? He looks at you almost like he was surprised that you said anything. Like, he is deep in his head right now. And he just kind of, like, surprisingly looks at you and sort of, like, shakes his head. It's a very kind of, like, weird demeanor that he has. You haven't seen him with it before. Well, I guess we should probably start by seeing if they have, um graveyard or some sort of tradition and uh, like how dispersed is this town like if we wander around in here would we be able to catch sight of a graveyard or a temple or anything like that I'll say yeah that you can just find a temple um, sort of a, a non- Denominational <laughs> temple, 
that <laughs> sort of open to all faiths. Just kind of a nice bigger building where people can congregate if they need to, but not necessarily to any one god. There's Are some you Unitarian church here? Yeah, and there's <laughs> sort of like uh, small little statues to various good aligned deities throughout the church. Interesting. Like a tiny hall of gods. Yeah. And they're like not well kept up. They're just sort of like old. And there's like clearly ones that are missing. Sort of like placeholder ones. Isolde, at one point you realize that like they've got a statue of one god, but it says like a different name under it. Like the guy who's running <laughs> the place fucked it up. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, is there anyone working there? Yeah, there's just a, a really, really old guy who's sort of like uh, kind of walking around dusting things, but it's almost like it's making it worse. He's just spreading dirt around. And he sort of looks up and says, Can I help you? Yes, um, a companion of ours uh, passed away while we were at sea, and we are looking um, for burial. Oh yeah, just, uh, there's probably a hole out back, just toss him in and, uh, somebody will say something and, uh, somebody will bury it. The ground's a little f solid right now, so we probably have to wait a few days. Wonderful, thank you. Um, is there anyone in town that makes coffins? He sort of blinks at you. And does Never it. mind. He kind of Thank you. points back, kind of nondescript, uh, to a general direction. He says, The hole's that way. But it doesn't really help you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and she'll relay that information to the rest of the group. Damon said that Missile probably doesn't mind what we do with it. But I don't know. We should at least bury him with some nice things. Trinkets. Maybe his favorite books. Damon will procure what's left of Morty from his cloak. Uh, so, yeah, we all kind of like walk back there and demarcus kind of like takes his body to presumably like what was it, like a prepared open grave and he lays him like next to it and i'm assuming we all kind of like start sort of going through his stuff <laughs> like before, you know like take the bag of holding and like very respect like demarcus is kind of like respectfully going through all the stuff not really saying anything and just kind of like laying it next to missile and he says Know that he wouldn't have cared, but any of this stuff something that any of you would think we should leave with him as we bury him, then it's the time to say so. Probably at least his staff and his breastplate. Yeah, I think that's good. And maybe Mortimer. Damon agrees with that. We'll set Mortimer next to him. Mosner will uh, druid craft a whole bunch of uh, silver looking flowers to sort of look like uh, gears, I guess. Just kind of place it uh, either in his hands or under Morty with the body so that could be buried alongside. Sorry that we can't bury you with your notes but I think we're going to need them. And I'll just kind of like look down at him for a second. I wish that I could bury you with a whole library, but it would probably be cruel that you couldn't read it. So, I hope that whatever plane you ended up on, there is new knowledge that you've found already. 
Marcus kind of like places him in the hole and uh, stands over it and says, in his head, he says this to Kelimvor, but he says the verbal part out loud. He says, his wish to live forever and cheat death was perverse. He was our friend. He helped us on this quest. His intentions were nothing but noble. Go wherever he goes now. An infinite amount of knowledge for him to consume, and it's a good place. And Demarcus starts shoveling dirt over him. Yeah, I'll help because it's all frozen and tough. Yep. And you. As, so, John, uh, you can play this how you want. As Izzy and I are shoveling dirt in, uh, Demarcus would kind of like break a little bit and he would try to he would basically like have a compulsive urge to blurt out to izzy because he's kind of like freaked out and he feels that he's gonna like descend into a weird place uh he would have an urge to blurt out to izzy that he kept a knife that he found on missile and like it's partially like he wants to confess this out of a guilt like a guilty conscience thing that he took a knife without telling anybody from his dead companion uh, he's also worried about somehow like descending into like a dark place and he thinks that time is kind of like of the essence and it might not be he doesn't even know if he can say it now so he would try to communicate that he took this dagger from missile yeah and that it was attached to like a curse and if you allow him to say it i'll i'll speak it but yeah. um, make a uh, wisdom saving throw okay um oh shit, where's my token um uh, yeah uh, I can... that's all right you can, you can roll it if you want. It would be plus four for my proficiency, and then plus three from my saving throw thing as a paladin, and then plus one from the ring of protection. <laughs> Demarcus, <laughs> you here in your head. Now calm down. Let's not do anything hasty. <laughs> And your words Marcus stick continues in your to throat. Frozen Earth. Yeah, with like a kind of like almost like nauseous, sick look on his face, Demarcus just silently shovels dirt. Yeah, she's paying attention to him because he's acting real weird, but <laughs> she's not sure if this is like a grief thing. Gonna have to keep an eye on that boy. It'll be fine. Everyone's fine. All right. Uh, you guys shovel dirt on the grave of Missile Ludovic and find yourselves sort of standing awkwardly in the graveyard of a very sparse town. I mean, you are sort of in the middle of nowhere, uh, in this small sort of mining town slash uh, port town, sort of a small stop that maybe small vessels make but most other vessels skip over and around you you see sort of townspeople walking around but uh and they all sort of turn and look at you you're clearly outsiders you're clearly um not the normal type of person that comes to this town but they're sort of keeping away they're not coming up to you and given that you're burying somebody in a graveyard already um they uh stay pretty far away from you that's fair where are we on this map right now i'll say that you guys are up here cool well we should probably figure out how to get to ten towns Probably also ask the locals if there's been any sightings of Rathator. And we'll need supplies once we know how we are traveling. Makes sense. <clears throat> um, I guess I forgot, while we were in the church, or passing through the church, was there any iconography connected to that moon maiden? Or goddess? To Saloon? Saloon, yeah. yeah. Oh. Ooh, 
new text. I like new no text. new text. Uh, no. So yeah, you uh, you find like a small statue, uh, sort of a crescent moon shaped uh, statue, and it just says like the goddess saloon. Okay, but no one else kind of there or nothing no. else to see from it. Okay. She is represented in this hall, but it is underwhelming. Cool. So are we all going... Sorry, what did you say, Azilda, before I backtracked a oh. little bit? We should um, probably find some locals, maybe at the Silver Triangle, and ask about different ways of passage, and also about uh, Arathator, if there's been any sightings, any news, you know. That seems to be the best. She will lead them to the tavern if there is no objections. Okay. And I will drop all your tokens. Okay. Oh shit. Mm. Oh, it's global elimination, so it'll be fine. Yeah, activate. Alright, so you guys step into a very uh sort of tight tavern it's like it's small it looks like maybe the architecture was originally for dwarves or halflings and so the ceiling comes down pretty low the uh, furniture is sort of close together and um you see just only two patrons talking to each other and uh, the barkeeper is surprised when all of you walk in sort of in your various degrees of glorif glorifil <laughs> Jeez. Uh, glorified armor and uh, you know attire and you come in sort of looking like uh, superheroes and uh, he just says oh well met uh, welcome to the silver triangle uh, can I help you? Um, I assume you have ale? Uh, yep. Take Pl around. Plenty of ale. Uh, round coming up. And he sort of like runs back to the kitchen. You get the feeling that there's no other staff working here. It's just him. And then he comes back with a bunch of ales and sort of awkwardly sets all of them at once on the table. And uh, sort of points to it, though it already looks like maybe there's not enough chairs, and he sort of hurriedly runs to get another chair to put at the table for you. <laughs> says, uh, is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, don't, sorry, we no. don't get that many people here. It's uh, wasn't expecting anything. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure it's um, pretty apparent that we are new in town. Um, we were wondering if you could fill us in on uh, different ways to head inland uh, towards ten towns. Oh, uh, I'm not entirely sure what you'd want there. I suppose your business is your business, but um, well, it's a tricky answer. The uh, town itself is sort of on a lockdown, so getting there is one thing, getting in there is another thing. Um, from what I hear, you know, there's uh, sort of, a, a, I don't know, insurrection or something on the inside. I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to explain it myself. It's mostly just rumors, but um, anyways, yeah, I mean, you could... You could get there by foot, if that's your, your goal. There are caravans that travel there. And a caravan would be costly or not? Oh, well, it really depends on what you're looking for. I mean, uh, small caravans just kind of head that way. You could probably just tag along. So, uh, 
you know, they wouldn't wait up for you if something happened. Though, uh, you know, you could always hire people to escort you. There are men around here that are willing to offer up their services. Then he sort of looks at all of you and he says, Though I get the feeling that you are all more than capable of handling yourselves. Are there any, um, like, major dangers? Like, we've heard that there are dragons up here. Is that something that has been happening recently that we should look out for? Well, uh, there's always a number of things that plague these lands. But, uh, thankfully a dragon hasn't been one of them. At least here. I don't, can't speak for elsewhere in the north. I know there are rumors of uh, various dragons in the midst. My uncle told me he once saw a giant red dragon flying through the sky, but uh, between you and me, I think he was uh, a little drunk. As for uh, other fears, well, frankly, uh, maybe I'd, maybe you guys are the people to talk to. There's There's been a problem in the mines recently. I don't know if you guys are interested in coin or helping out, but... Uh, I'm sure there'd be a number of people who would be could use your help. What sort of trouble? Well, uh, a nondescript kind. The people who go in don't come out, and uh, that happens enough times. The assumption is that something's come to uh, roost, so to speak, in the mines, and uh, well. Somebody's got to go in and get it out. Understood. It wouldn't be uh, too big of a problem, except for that's sort of how we make most of our money in this town, and uh, it's also where we go to hide when uh, things get rough. So <laughs> we're sort of out of a uh, place to uh, protect ourselves anymore. Isolda looks entirely sympathetic. Marcus kind of interjects and says, what do you mean when things get rough? He, uh, he says, well, uh, you guys are outsiders, but uh, it's sort of bad luck to talk about it, but it's been pretty regular lately that uh, frost giants come, uh, come around and sort of tear the place apart, loot whatever they want. You could probably see by the houses out there. They ain't much because uh, we have to rebuild them. And uh, after a while, we just started building them quick. And, uh, well, they don't withstand very much. The giants sort of get what they want and then they leave. And uh, we usually hide out in the mines. But, well, that's not really an option. We're all sort of dreading the uh, inevitable next giant attack where we'll have to decide between... Squaring off against them, or squaring off against whatever's inside the mines. When do you expect the frost giants? Do they come frequently? Well, frequently enough that it's uh, a problem, but it's not predictable. They sort of come when they please, though they have sort of ramped up their uh, attacks of late. Uh, it sort of coincides with the, nor the rest of the rumors we've heard up north, which is that most towns are getting assaulted or sacked pretty regularly by uh, giants and orcs and barbarians. It's, it's kind of a goddamn mess. You guys sure you don't want to head back south? <laughs> Probably. Is no, that... I think uh, we'll fit right in here. And Demarcus just downs his ale. Uh, Taryn will ask, um, have you heard any rumors as to why these people, the giants and the orcs, are more active lately? God, well, that would be assuming that orcs and giants have reasons for these kinds of things, which, uh, frankly, I'm not sure they do. Though there's a half-orc fellow who works in the blacksmith. He's, uh, he's not half bad. I mean, he's nice enough. Big, scary, green fellow, but uh, makes makes good good work. Uh, 
And as far as, um, like, hospitality goes, is there a place where we might be able to stay if we can't, um, leave town this evening? Oh, well, uh, we've got some rooms here, though it'll be a tight squeeze with a group your size. He kind of gestures around. He said, this uh, establishment was... Well, the original owners were halflings, so everything's a little bit scaled down, as you can tell. I think that's all right. We know each other pretty well by now. All right. Um, thank you very much for your help. Oh, of course. Well, uh, sure. Let me know if you want to uh, check out those mines. We could sure use the help. I don't know how much gold we could muster up, but uh, I'm sure there's some, some reward in it for you. We'll let you know if we are able to. I exchange glances with the strange figure in the corner that looks so much like someone that I knew once. He uh, looks over at you, sort of just like unblinking eyes. Charming. And then he uh, sort of winks at you. Do, um, do any of you have preferences on whether you would prefer to travel by caravan or by griffin? Um, I think caravan's probably the better idea. Especially if the towns are on lockdown, it might be easier to get in without ushering the entire city's attention if we walk in with others. Uh, agreed. I'm glad that you said that, because griffins are just... I don't know. It would be scary to fly. I think. Not all that bad. It actually might be faster. It would definitely be faster. Well, if I get a good enough look at a griffin, then maybe I could, uh... Save us some gold. You want to be able to carry all of us? Well, and I can carry um, some people. I think Taryn is right. If we try, we should try to attract as little attention as possible. The Griffin's expensive. To try to save our resources, we won't come by much of here. Uh, what are our thoughts on the mines? If we take care of the mines, we'll still be drawing attention to ourselves, so if we're interested but in that's that. down here, like, I don't want to draw a lot of attention in ten towns. Hmm. Um, my only I thoughts imagine... on the mines... What was that? I imagine that if we don't help, by the next time we return to this town, it will be destroyed almost entirely. I was worried about that, too. Um, it won't do us a lot of good if we accomplish our tasks up north only to be stranded up here because um, the town couldn't save itself. No offense, Taryn, but I think we'll be attracting attention wherever we go. Yeah, we're not the most uh, subtle of people. I think it is wise, though, not to show up on Griffins, but I well, do I think that it is probably the right thing to do to help these people. It would be an awful thing to have no shelter. It may also be a practical concern. If the township is destroyed, we will be unable to retreat or make use- retreat to or make use of this location. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to say. Well, it sounds like we have plenty of reasons, practical and not. 
But let's um, at least try to find a caravan owner and uh, make arrangements before we wander into the mines. Though I suppose we don't know how long that will take. And I'll uh, turn back to the barkeep and ask him, The mines here, are they like very, very deep? Oh, well, uh, they're, they're not too deep, I suppose. They're, uh, don't have to go too far in to get uh, the kind of ore that people are interested in. So it wouldn't take us, like, multiple days, you think, to take care of the problem? He sort of laughs. Oh, God, no. No, we're not running a dwarven operation over here. We just, uh, simple mining operation. Uh, take you about 20 minutes to walk over there. Um, how Isn't often it? do caravans leave to the ten towns? Oh, about once a week. And, uh, not to uh, put a damper on anything, but uh, the last one left about two days ago. So you're looking at uh, another five days probably before one sets out again. This uh, seems to upset Azilda. She looks very stressed. He sort of like frowns and says, yeah, sorry, uh, there's like two groups that make the run and uh, they try to space it out so that, well, they're available and they, uh, it takes about a week to get there on foot, so. Right, of course. So we on some sort of, uh, you know, time clock here. Oh, in the meantime, we should just protect this town and clear the mines. Be good to actually help a place rather than perpetuate its corruption. What is it that is mined here in town? He uh, sort of lights up and uh, he points to Demarcus's hammer, which is sort of on his back. And he says, well, uh, you've got a little bit of it right there. It's called uh, adamantine. I see. This doesn't seem like a very big operation for something which seems so valuable. Well, sure. But uh, it's kind of a hard metal to use. Not a lot of people like it because it's so... Uh, well, requires a lot of extra work. We mostly just mine it here and ship it down to Luskit guys in the Mirabar district shape it but uh, we got a blacksmith who can make stuff with it I'll just turn to the rest of the group and say is there anything that is particularly attractive to adamantine anything particularly insidious I don't like know if anybody creature? would know but I will yes. try to rack my brain for, I don't know, whatever it is that I know about fire shear creatures that might like adamantine. Yeah, go for nature? it. Yeah, nature. Or history. Um, you got nothing. Yeah, I, d I, I can't think of any reason why a creature would be attracted to a metal like that. Maybe well, I suppose in some sense. Cave. Yes, and in that sense, it it may be some degree of relief that it is not something attracted to power on that level. Ah, uh, I see. I suppose we won't know until we know. But uh, she'll kind of turn her head to Johoff because he was sitting next to her when he asked that question, and she'll just say. Not a timeline specifically, but I 
have reason to think that we shouldn't delay. Fair enough. But we should take care of this and um, I guess wait for the next caravan. Uh, I'm not sure if Tim said something. Tim, did you? I saw your icon light up, but no voice came through, just so you know. Oh, uh, we could hear him. Oh, uh, I, just, I, oh, I can't. I'm sorry. Then I'll, have, I'll just reset myself. Sorry. So is the consensus that we are going to go poke around town some more and maybe go to the mines in the morning? If we are going to be here anyway, it seems that that is a reasonable course of action. I know I could use a good night's sleep and a couple of uh, bottles of whiskey before I go into some mine looking for some shit. I think we could all use that. Yeah, I'm kind of spent as well. We should still poke around town, see if we can dig up some information before it uh, gets too dark out. Hmm. I don't see any problem with that. She'll, uh, down the rest of her ale and uh, leave seven gold on the uh, counter by habit. Okay. And uh, you guys are going where again, sorry? Hello? Can you hear me? I can now. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, I can hear you. I, yeah, I can hear you, John. And I could hear Tim the last time he talked to you. I don't know what was going on, sorry. Okay. Uh, where are you going? To check out the major looking buildings in town and try to find caravanners. Well, I guess that question was already answered. Um, just major buildings, try to do some information gathering on the mines. So you've seen the church, you've uh, gone to um, the inn, and then um, really the only other place in town that you've sort of noticed as a big building is the blacksmith. It's called Ham Ambers. I guess he would know a thing or two about the mines. Oh, okay. And, uh, let me drop token. Okay. Uh, activate. You guys walk into a blacksmith shop where there is a very large green man at work pounding away at an anvil. And he sort of, like, wipes the sweat from his brow and turns to you and says, uh, Wilmot. Nice to meet you. Likewise. We are wondering um, if there's anything that you could tell us about the um, the mines or what's been going on there. Um, who are you again? Um, travelers. Okay, well, um, I, I guess you're not from up here, but, uh, my name is Greensmith, and, uh, this is my blacksmith shop, and, uh, well, I'd, I'd kind of like to know your names. Sure. 
She like kind of hesitates for a second, um, and then says, um, I'm Isolde Brynja, and these are my companions, Damon, Johoff, Terin, Bosner, and Demarcus. She'll point them out as she introduces them. He says, Isolde? Never heard of it. What, uh, what do you want to do with the mines? We were just told that there are, um, rumors of people going in and not coming out. Just want to oh, yeah. Stories. Yep, there's probably something nesting up in there again. Is that a regular thing? What usually nests there? Well, lots of things nest in mine, but uh, it's probably one of them big lizard f lizard types, you know? Kind of like a dragon, but no wings. Likes to swallow people whole. Is this what is called a drake? He looks at you, and he kind of points his hammer, he says... Maybe. Can I, like, roll to see if I've ever seen or heard of anything like that? Yeah, roll a history check? Okay. Um... You have heard of things nesting in mines, you've heard of large lizardy things that are sort of in the depths that eat people, but you don't have any direct knowledge of this. Cool. And he sees you look sort of puzzled, and he just sort of... And you guys are just sort of standing there silently while he's waiting. For you to interact, and he just goes, Southerners. And he just keeps hammering away at an anvil. As sort of like seeing the awkwardness of the situation, Demarcus would have uh, kind of looked around and walked up to him and said, uh, So you work with uh, a lot of adamantine, sir? I can. I, uh,. Been looking for someone who knows a lot about it for some time, and he pulls his hammer off of his back and sort of gives it to the guy to inspect. And he says, I came by this in a dragon horde down south some time ago, and I've always been a little bit curious about where something like this might have come from. Do you know anything about it? He looks at it, and within like half a second, he looks back up. He says, It's dwarven make. It's old. Really old. That's a fine piece. And he sort of turns back to his anvil and keeps working. Marks just kind of nods and uh, steps back. Joe-off steps up and goes, All right, while you're uh, inspecting things, what do you think of this? And hands him his hammer. He looks it over and goes, Elvish. Pretty clearly. And, uh, looks like it's, uh, some kind of divine ritual weapon or something. He looks yeah, around looks at your around. group and says, uh, you all have magic weapons you want me to, uh, tell you where they came from? Uh, Zelda shakes her head. No, but it's very kind of you to do that. And she'll uh, just take like five gold and kind of put it over on the counter. He Sorry sees that we are taking up your time. the coin and sort of lights up. He says, oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm just a little grumpy. I haven't eaten all day. You know, it goes work. What sure. is it that you need? We were really just looking for information. Um, 
but the the wares here are quite fine, so perhaps we will consider some upgrades as well. And she kind of looks around at all the stuff he's got hanging on the walls. Yeah, um, I'd say that he has um, basically every type of adamantine armor, one set of it. So splint or, um, you know, full plate or whatever. He's got it. Nice. I have mithril armor. Yeah. What's the... I'll, I'll look up the difference. The, the diff mithril, um, it's disadvantage. The mithril gets rid of disadvantage on stealth checks, so if you switch to adamantine, uh, I think you louder yeah you'd be you'd go back to being loud but adamantine armor makes you immune to critical hits what that's pretty dope yep i mean oh, you still well, that sounds super useful <laughs> you still take full <laughs> damage regular damage but you can't be crit anymore nice try though robot yeah, I mean, let's ask him if he I mean, can change our be. robot friend into an adamantine robot. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't think Damon would want to because without this like specially made armor that Missile gave to him, he would yeah. be uh, yeah. back to being quite slow and quite uh, loud. Yeah. And also Missile made him this armor. <laughs> yeah, which is effectively Mithril plate, full plate. Yeah. She'll just thank him for his time and then uh, head out, unless other people want to hang around. Uh, as as we're like leaving, Damon would shoot over his shoulder. I don't suppose you have anything in here specifically for slaying krakens or the like. <laughs> he laughs. He goes, Ugh, only a fool would try to kill a kraken. Yes, I thought not. Thank you for your time. He nods. <clears throat> Vosner would uh, go and ask, uh, well, is there anyone that would else that you would recommend uh, telling us about things in the mountains? <clears throat> Specifically, uh, what you think that creature is currently? He sort of wrinkles his brow and goes, well, First of all, it's not a mountain. It's more of a crater. Second of all, I didn't say one thing. I said something. And there could be multiple. Mm. Third of all, it's a small town. It's not that many of us. And, uh... Frankly, most of the people that probably would know are probably in there somewhere being chewed on by some giant lizard monster. Well, that makes sense. Well, appreciate it. Though, uh... Deshara might know more than I do. She seems to have her, uh, finger on the pulse, if you will. Ah, uh, where can we find her? At her place. North of town. The woman who trains griffins, correct? Yeah. The one and only. And then he sort of pauses. He said, You uh, might want to be more polite with her. She's less likely to uh, forgive trespasses. Oh, understood. Sorry for our rudeness. It's all right. I come to expect it from Southerners. Vosner looks uh, kind of guilty. That's about it. And he sort of doesn't care about your guilt and <laughs> just goes back to Amarin. Oh well.
What happened? Uh, I guess I, uh, Vazner will leave the shop after everyone else. That's what everyone yep. is doing. Yep. And, um, what are you guys doing now? I guess making our way up towards the Griffins. Taking our way downtown. Yeah, alright. You know what's the, the sad part is me just deleting missile from all of these scenes that I had prepared? Doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. Oh god. So sad. On that very sad note, I actually have to head out. Oh. Sorry about that. Oh, that's fine. I got to get this chapter into Raymond. So, um, anyway, if you need Joe Hoff for anything, um, you know, fuck right off until next time. <laughs> How does he feel about he punching about griffins? Punching. He feels great about punching them, less good about riding them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will talk to you guys hopefully some point throughout the week. If not, I'll talk to you next Sunday. Oh, speaking right. of, um, uh, next Sunday is the Super Bowl. It's also my birthday. Um, does that? Yay! Yay! Does that... I'm glad you guys cheered at that part and not the Super Bowl part. Um, does that? conflicts with anybody's shit? Like, are people doing Super Bowl things? Are they not nope. going to be able to come? I don't, don't really care about basketball. I did not know the Super Bowl was being held in Tampa until I saw all these signs going up. <laughs> yeah, but for sure, if you've got, like, birthday plans, like you and Nat were going to do something, I, we, you know, feel free to uh, take yeah. a week off as the DM. My birthday plans are to... Uh, create a new character with Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That sounds right legitimately on. fun. Yeah, actually, I have that character already done. But uh, <laughs> I will save it, I guess. Um, actually. Mm. Yeah, it's funny. When I said, how are you doing before we play today, John, you jokingly said, oh, just find out ways to kill my pe uh, players. And... Yeah. We're joking. It was true. Um, Dylan, uh, yeah. how are you guys all doing for time? Do we want to stop early, or do we want to just like push on to another chunk of story? Because I'm good for whatever. Yeah, feel free. Don't okay. don't feel like you need to stop on my account. Like I'll catch up with whatever. Sure. Happens. Sure. We could just, like, get up to the point where we go in the mines and then stop wherever that is. Okay. Um, then I'm going to need to stop and chat with Dylan for, like, five minutes to maybe brainstorm something for his character, and then we'll fill it out in fuller detail later. Um, and then <laughs> we can start up again in, like, five, ten minutes, and Dylan will have a character again. Oh. Whoa. Ooh. And he'll still talk like this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Better. <laughs> all right. No. See you all. Oh. Oh, Bye, Tim. Shit. See you later, Tim. I miss you already. <laughs> okay. For at least a day, since uh, our elf friend here um, told me that you were coming. Uh, the figure at the table looks at all of you with a, a blank expression and nods his head. Do I recognize the figure? You do not. You have never seen this man in your life. I'm sorry. Um, I must have forgotten your name, she says to the elf figure. Uh, he looks at you and said, says, You've never heard it. I'm... But you... I'm... Veyrul. Forgotten the last name, oh my goodness. Veyrul Felithir. And you knew we were coming? Yes. How? I was told. By who? Mistra, the goddess of time. And at that, Dashara sort of 
looks confused and uh, turns to you as old and says, Oh, you don't know each other? I, the way he talked about you guys, I just assumed he, you knew each other. Um, Taryn's inciting. Uh, Very yeah, well. he appears to be telling the truth. Interesting. Zelda looks, um, some mixture of, like, apprehensive and a little frightened of both of them. Does Vosner recall <clears throat> uh, that god's name? Was that the same from, uh, when we were on the, in the, uh, tower in Gunderland? Or oh, not Gunderland. Um, the we were in the Earth Tower. It was the first God of Time that we talked about, and then the second was Monitor, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. And the second one was the answer. So, um, yeah. Taryn will ask Did Mistra tell you uh, why we were coming? Yes. He'll stare what? at you. What interest would she have with us? An interest in what happens in the future. I think we are all interested in that. A, the tiniest of smirks appears on his face when you say that. Almost <laughs> imperceptible. So you've been preparing for us to come then, she says to Dishara. Oh, well, I've uh, been sort of entertaining your guest here, uh, your friend, or I guess, well, whatever. Uh, Beryl here, I've been uh, talking to him for the last day or so. He seems to think that uh, you guys have quite a journey ahead of you. I'm sorry, but that is a very frightening thought for someone else to have about you. Yeah, well, um, I just assumed you guys were acquainted. He's gone ahead and paid already for your griffin training, and, uh, for the trip as well to Bryn Shander. Mark is kind of like moves to the side and gets into, like, eye contact with Veril and says, So, we'll be doing this trip together. Yes. It's not up to us to decide. None of us. Marcus, uh, almost approvingly not. She uh, looks up and says, well, um, the griffins can be made ready uh, if that is something you're interested in. Um, we were first um, thinking about helping this town with its problem in the mine, um, so we may not be able to go right away. Oh, well, um, I mean, they can be ready at your leisure. I mean, they're all paid for. Hmm. Well, maybe we can get to know our new friends uh, over uh, helping out the town. I'm going to turn to uh, Feral and say, why... Um, Griffins, there are other ways to get to Brinchander. They are most efficient. So we must hurry? We have things to do here, do we not? We do. Seems as though that you have information that we do not how efficient we should be in traveling.
Would you be opposed to traveling by caravan? Yes. Because it's not efficient. In a way. It is not safe. And you know this already, that it won't be safe. Yes. I'm gonna insight check him. Um, Go for it. While we're checking, I just rolled a religion check to see what Terran knows about Maestro. Yeah, so what you know about Mistra is that she is the goddess of magic, but also time. And um, I guess, what else were you looking for? Oh, I don't know. It's just like, I guess it would just have been like, were there any like um, character traits known about her, like, um, or how she interacts with her followers? Um, there, I guess, uh, with religion, you would know that she um, is sort of a deity that doesn't necessarily need to be followed in, like, the divine sense, but one that um, basically established the weave, which grants all magical power, and um, is tied to it. And when she was uh, slain during the spell plague... Um, you know that magic uh, reacted terribly and uh, there was like a cataclysmic event and then she was Im almost immediately brought back to life. Okay. Cool. Yep. And Isolde, your insight check Can... reveals that he is telling the truth. Can I uh, Can I make any kind of uh, history check or anything about uh, what I know of Netheril and uh, its magical properties with relation to Mistra. Yeah, so for Damon, it's a little bit weirder. I'm just going to spare you the role. Um, okay. For Damon, um, when he was around, the goddess was actually called Mistral. And. Um, that's that was the goddess of magic and um there was an event called crassus's folly which uh was a, a cataclysmic event 1500 years ago that uh immediately afterwards um daemon and uh, multanus carried out a various set of events and um that was like it was like kind of after that cataclysmic event that Damon was involved with stuff and then put into stasis. So as far as Damon knows, um, the goddess of magic was Mistral. But he might have gleaned okay. by now that the goddess of magic is Mistra now. At least that's what textbooks say. I well, imagine Damon would have caught puzzle up. Over. Yeah. Um, Damon will turn to his old and say, uh, I know that we thought we would uh, help this town, but it does seem that there is, uh, some urgency that we may not have been aware of. It may be worth it to consider leaving as soon as possible. She kind of frowns and gives that some thought. If you know what lies ahead, she says to the elf, do you know what will happen to this town if we leave without helping them? We will not leave without helping them. I see. It is important to our journey that we do so? It is necessary. You are a very strange man. He stares at you. And you notice, making eye contact, that it's almost as though the whole eye is the pupil. Whoa. There's very little to no white in his eyes. She looks a bit unnerved. 
Marcus says, Somnistra shows you what will happen. Speak through her. She speaks through you. Yes. We're going to be able to trust you. Can you prove it? In time. Well, when? He stares at you. <laughs> She'll kind of look over at Demarcus and say, if it counts for anything, I think he has told the truth this entire time. Marcus shrugs his shoulders and looks at him and says, what do we do next, then? You're going to the mines, are you not? In the morning was the plan. The slightest sign of disappointment shows on his face. He says, so be it. Where are you He's staying? Left in the mines. He looks at both of you, unsure who to answer. <laughs> All right, yeah, go ahead, Izzy. Oh, mine was unimportant. She just asked where he was staying. You uh, say your question, because I didn't hear it. Uh, I asked, uh, I kind of like look into his like scary-ish, but uh, probably curiously um, uh, attractive eyes. And I say, um, have you seen what's in the mines? I have. Will you tell us? There are, John, correct me if I'm wrong. There are dragons in the mine. Nesting dragons. It's two serpent-like creatures. There are two serpents in the mine. <laughs> Nesting serpents. Have you seen if we all survive? All of us? It is likely. Or it's just kind of nods, stops questioning. a lot of questions for you. Um, if we aren't going to go until the morning, perhaps you would join us for some conversation? Back at I the will. tavern. Yes? She almost looks like she's studying him. What is he wearing, by the way? Like, any sort of indicator of where he's from? Um, it's, let's just say, like, for now, uh, a traveling robe, like, reliable, uh, well-made, but made for, for, for traveling far distances, and otherwise unadorned foot wrappings, and, yeah, dressed unspectacularly. Interesting. But it's got great hair. Yeah, uh, platinum white hair, but, like, the blackness of space in his eyes. And his skin is very, very pale, with the tiniest hue of blue. Hmm. What are you? Is that meta, or anything? <laughs> <laughs> I was just, uh, me being overly curious. Don't answer that question. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'll look at Tashara and just say, I suppose we will return when we can then for the griffins, and, well, how safe are they to ride? She smiles. She says, well, depends on how good you do with the training. Do they go very, very high, or just kind of, like, a little bit high? That also depends on, um, a number of factors. The weather, but, um, we can stay low to the ground if you're worried. Yeah, 
very worried. I'm not a fan of heights. Fosner is very excited. He has a very excited look on his face. And uh, he asks, how, what is the highest uh, you've seen a Griffith uh, fly? The highest I've seen a griffin fly? Well, it's, it's almost impossible to know. I never measured. But you can't reach the sun, if that's what you're asking. Oh. Well, <laughs> I guess you can't have it. But I'm ready. Wonderful. And then she gestures towards your sort of antlers and... Um, other sort of animal skins and she says all of you must be careful not to adorn yourself with too many animal furs griffins are um, a predatory lot and um, well if you come in smelling like a horse they might uh, treat you like lunch mm. <laughs> Zelda looks terrified that's good to know uh, I guess, uh, guess I'll have to borrow a coat or something. Very they good. are quite strong, these griffins. I am heavier than I may look. She looks at you and she says, and like how maybe the floorboards are bowing a little bit under where Damon walks, and she goes, yes, um, perhaps you will get your own griffin to ride. Others can double up. He'll just nod. Are they proficient in, in battle? <laughs> well, they are, but um, if we're traveling and if uh, there's multiple riders, it's not advised. I, of course, ride my own griffin, and, um, well... We are very proficient in battle, but uh, the ones you'll be riding are more for travel than um, defense. Mm. Uh, but they're very capable of defending themselves. I'd love to see uh, if you could show us a few, or at least show me a few things, maybe tomorrow, after, uh, I guess, the regular lessons. Of course. Vosner looks extremely pleased. And, uh, she says, would you all like to meet them? I suppose. And, uh, she walks to the back door and opens it, and, uh, kind of gestures for you guys to follow. And um, out back, Demarcus walks first. Uh, you see a massive griffin um, with just like glorious white wings and a white head. And uh, she goes up to it and sort of pets its face and uh, turns to you and says, This is Athena. She is the alpha of the group. And uh, she says, No one else is to ride her but me. And. Um, if you try, she'll kill you. And she smiles. And then she whistles loudly, and it rings out in this sort of open space, sort of echoing off the trees. And um, one by one, out of the sky, swooping down out of nowhere, griffins appear all sort of uh, coming to a landing and then sort of trotting in place before nesting down and sort of relaxing. And she says, and these are the rest of uh, our group. And she points to each one. She says, Dreambeak, Kaleno, Eurus, and Boanon. And they each sort of bow as she addresses their names. And she uh, turns to the group and says, um, 
this is the le this is what's left of my um you know uh, I don't know what you'd call a group of griffins roost um flock flock this is what's left of my flock pride I, I don't know unfortunately um a number of my griffin eggs have recently been stolen hopefully um sort of she looks back at the rest of the group and the griffins and says hopefully new eggs will be um, made and um, we can expand our numbers though as it is it's hard enough feeding all of these fellas she sort of smiles and uh, she notices one's covered in blood and she says Dreambeak if you ate that farmer's horse again I swear to god and you can tell it looks like guilty <laughs> she sighs and says well there goes another 20 gold does that happen often? unfortunately they crave horse meat above all else hmm. good thing we're not horses good thing indeed very well and then she sort of like dismisses them with a wave and they all sort of take off to the sky. Oh, that's incredible. She says, yes. So, um, who, uh, do you, is it someone that you know that stole, uh, the eggs or is it something that you don't know? Well, I can't say I know him personally, but um, there was kind of a shady figure who came through here a few months ago. Sort of a con man, grifter type. Anyways, he uh, he stole a number of them. I'm sure of it. Well, you are all um, very silent. I suppose um, you should be off to take care of what you need to take care of. I'll be here in the morning for your training. And, um, well, we can set off whatever day you'd like. But uh, that's up to you, I suppose. Sorry, John, I had my mic on mute. Um, I said, uh, <clears throat> hello to the rest of the group. Um, well, if you need any help to retrieve your eggs, maybe we can maybe get a lead if we're up for it. And I'm just kind of look at the group. Um, she sort of looks uh, appreciative, but says, "Unfortunately, I think you're going the wrong way. The guy I'm looking for, last I know, went south." Yes, I think um, we are on a very hard timeline now. But thank you very much for introducing us to them and for entertaining our companion for the last day. Yes, well, he had a many great, a great deal, many things to say. I'm sure. Well, hopefully we will see you uh, just in a day or so. Good luck in the mines. Thank you. And she'll kind of nod her head and look uh, a little hesitantly at the Elf fellow. Shall we return to the tavern then? We shall. She'll head that way. Alright. And um, with that, I think we should end there. I think that's a good stopping point.